Uh, now we go to the fourth unit of uh, the chapter called Earth in Social Studies 9th AP SSC Board. Internal structure of the Earth. Internal structure. Look, let us look at the internal structure of the Earth we live, we live in. We can see the continuity from the early days of the formation of the Earth as we try to look deep inside the Earth. It took us years, years of scientific investigation, analysis of data to form an understanding of the interior of the earth. What we are going to tell you now is did not come like just they came to know. How can they come to know? They have to investigate. One of the big sources of investigation were volcanoes and earthquakes. That data they analyzed. The main reason for this is that even the deepest mines we have dug do not go beyond a few kilometers under the surface while the radius or the distance to the center of the earth is over 6,000 kilometers. So we can go only a few kilometers inside. When you have coal mines, you go inside the earth. That is not inside the earth at all. If you look at the whole earth, you know, the whole earth. The radius itself is 6,000 kilometers. The diameter would be 1,200 km, 12,000 kilometers. But we have gone only a few kilometers inside. So obviously we did not know directly. We came to know about the internal structure of the earth like a detective from data given by earthquakes and volcanoes. The earth is made up of three main layers. The crust, one crust, two mantle, M-A-N-T-L-E, three core, core, C-O-R-E. First, let's see crust, one crust. We live on the outer part of the earth and that is called the crust. You, you saw in the last section, we saw in the last section, how this layer was formed. This layer goes up to the depth of 30 to 100 kilometers. So 30 to 100 kilometers it goes. So some places is 30, 40, 50, 100, 60, like that. The crust mostly consists of various kinds of rocks. So you have these hardened rocks. That is a crust. Second, mantle. It is from 100 kilometers till 100 is already crust. From 100 kilometers to 2,900 kilometers. So you can imagine how small that crust is. The upper part of the mantle is a pliable. P-L-I-A-B-L-E. That means you can change it. It's moldable like liquid. Layer over which the crust floats. The crust floats on that. Can you imagine you are not standing on solid ground? Only till 100 kilometers it's solid. Beyond that it is liquid and that goes from 100 to 2000, almost 2800 kilometers. It's all in liquid form that is called mantle. This consists mainly of chemicals called silicates. So you learn later chapter in chemistry very clearly what are silicates. They, they all have silicates. That, uh, the whole mantle has silicates. Now we come to the third part, core. So we, we reached till 100, from 100 to when we went to 2,900. Now we go from 2,900 to uh, uh, 6,376 kilometers, exactly the radius of the earth, inside, till the center of the earth. In thickness, it is composed of dense and heavy substances like iron and nickel. So you have iron and nickel there. It can be divided into two subparts. So core itself can be divided into two subparts. Outer core and inner core. So outer core is from 2900, not till 6376, but till 5100 kilometers, composed of liquid metallic material like nickel and iron. So nickel and iron are in liquid form. From inner core, it goes from 5100 to 6376 almost 1200 kilometers of the earth is made up of iron compounds and heavy substances like gold. So the outer core is in the liquid metallic form, metals in liquid form. So iron, if you go on heating it, it becomes liquid. That is still liquid now inside. Inner core is like that. The inner core is solid inner core. So inner core is solid, outer core is liquid. So from in the center it is solid. Outer small thin cover of the crust is solid, everything else is in liquid form. Interestingly, matter from deep inside the mantle shoots up through volcanoes. Not from the core, from the man mantle. Suppose they find some cracks, the whole, whole of that inner molten um, 
thing uh, in the, from the mantle silicates they come on the surface through volcanoes and fissures shoots up through volcanoes and fissures on ocean floors ocean floors also they come up you can have volcanoes inside the oceans also and cools down to form the earth's crust in many regions on the earth part of the earth's crust enters into the mantle mantle so you can imagine some part of the crust goes deep into the mantle and the matter from the mantle comes out on the top and into the mantle and once again becomes molten this constant process of formation and destruction new crust formation comes the crust forms again goes down into the mantle again comes up the constant process of formation and destruction of the crust explains the fact that our earth is still very active nobody is doing it all it's all active because of the internal pressure the internal forces the huge forces these volcanic eruptions keep taking place and this sinking of the crust into the molten the mantle also keeps taking place the crust on which we live is still being changed so it's not that the earth is you know like just static it's changed being changed of course very slowly by earthquakes volcanoes subduction s u b d u c t i o n is going in of land and rise of mountains due to processes happening deep down the earth so when the volcanoes shoot up they are called volcanic mountains they become mountains and so obviously if you there's a small inbox we'll do that inbox do you know the crust forms only 1% of the volume of the earth so if you take the sphere and you find out the volume of the crust it's only 1% just 1% and 60% is mantle and 83% is core so the core is huge the thickness of the crust is just about the thickness of the shell of an egg so if you imagine the earth to be an egg then what is the crust on which we are standing it is only 1% it's just about the thickness of the shell of an egg if we assume that the size of the earth is equal to the size of an egg and there is another question which you can do as a thinking question and a research question which you can do at home so that completes the unit number 4 uh, which is a very very interesting unit and next unit will be unit number 5 of the chapter of earth movements of the earth's crust